Hello my people, welcome to the SCORE channel. It's been a while since I've done an interview. So to make today's interview a little bit more special, I've got not one, not three, but two people together for this interview. Our previous interviews have only dealt with students who were actually in the process of getting their bachelor's degree. What about students who have decided to study abroad but haven't started yet? Today I'm going to introduce you to two students who are getting ready to study in France. Let's meet Isabella and Adrian. Hi everybody, I'm Isabella and I'm going to be studying in Strasbourg, France starting in September of this year. I'm going to be studying Applied Foreign Languages because it's a super useful bachelor's degree for getting into the international marketing and international commerce um, domain. My name is Adrian, it's Adrian. I'm 19, I live in Colombia, and I'm gonna go to study in the University of Strasbourg, Bachelor's of Applied Foreign Languages, with Spanish and English as a main focus of the bachelor's. I'm very excited. Okay, so Applied Foreign Languages sounds interesting. Can you tell me a little bit more about the program? Here, you know, if you do a, an Applied Foreign Languages course, which it's not even called Applied Foreign Languages, it's just, you know, foreign language, you can basically be like a translator or a teacher and your options are a little more limited whereas in in france you can do a master's degree after this bachelor's degree in a variety of subjects like um in my case i would be doing international commerce because the bachelor's degree in applied foreign languages actually includes some business classes in it. I are going to the same bachelor's, but I want to I want to do more translation and language stuff. But that's the cool part, as she was telling you when you, when I came in. It's very broad, so you can decide what you want to do as you go along. Whereas here, and you have to decide before you go into the career, and that's kind of. Uh, you know, that irks you a little bit. It's like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. So have you run into any problems or any unexpected obstacles? Okay, I have a, <laughs> I have a pretty big one that was right off the bat, like right when I was <laughs> first applying. So I'd been preparing to go to a specific university. I was, you know, in contact with this university over a year or so and uh, you know, COVID hit. Connection with them got a little wonky, of course. And, uh, but you know, they kept assuring me, oh yeah, we're gonna be open, we're gonna be open. For sure, we're gonna be open. So application time rolls around. I kept trying to get in touch with them because I was like, hey, you know, like I traveled 4,000 kilometers to do an, an Italian exam that you guys asked for. <laughs> you know, I, I never got a response from them. That was a major obstacle. You know, I, I had given them months in advance to respond to me, but uh, that's definitely a thing to uh, look out for with French institutions is uh, you have to have your stuff planned in advance. You have to have your questions a while beforehand. First of all, our campus friends in Colombia is like very, very useful. So I didn't necessarily have that kind of problem. But when communicating directly to the university, they did take very, very long to respond. Another thing that you have to consider is the time frames because they're very, very strict with that. And if you don't meet them, then you're gonna pretty much be out of luck. So for example, usually the application times open in November and, and in mid January, but you're not done yet. So, <laughs> so you have to gather all of these documents between that time frame because otherwise then you're not gonna be able to apply and they're not gonna help you out or giving you a little more time. It's here and it's done, time of Paris, 12 a.m., done. You have to do an interview and then tell you like time of France and the interview, even though we're both here in Colombia, me and the interviewer, they gave me time of Paris and I was like, that is like 8 a.m. I did my video recently for how to study in France, but I don't remember hearing a whole lot about this interview, so can you fill me in? Campus France has to do something called a SCAC interview. In my case, my Campus France was in Washington, D.C., and that's, I think, a six-hour difference from here in Hawaii. Gosh, so my first interview got postponed 
but they didn't tell me when they were going to move it. So they emailed me at 4 a.m. Hawaii time to be like, okay, can we do this interview in a couple hours? And I was like, what? By the time I woke up, it was already that time, like that time had passed. <laughs> so <laughs> they ask you about your motivations for, for studying in France, what your plans are after you've finished your diploma. They write out like this whole report on you and then they attach it to your application, but you can't see it. We had to do it in French. And that, that was a thing that we had to prepare for, for sure, because we're not used to doing that, obviously. Yeah, speaking of French, how hard was it to get your documents in order? Well, because of some kind of accord that they have between France and Colombia, we didn't have to translate anything. Only an apostille that's done by the government, and that was kind of problematic because of the way that Apostilles are done for high school diplomas here. You have to go to the place that you graduated in, and I don't live there, so I have to go all the way there, do it, get some seals, get some people to sign on it, and then send it online. So I needed to have everything translated into French, including my high school diploma and my transcripts. They recommended the American Translators Agency, I think that's what it's called, but nobody on that site responded to me. <laughs> so I was sort of scrambling near the end, trying to find <laughs> a translator that would do it. What about your French speaking level? What did they expect from you guys? So there are universities, quite a few actually, that need a C1 French level. So you need to ask them if they if they don't post it on their site because their sites are kind of shitty. <laughs> so you have to ask them and then wait for like a month for the for the response. In my case, I was actually gonna apply to two universities there. I needed the C1 for one of them. The other one did take a B2, but you know, that's they, they didn't open up. So in my case, I applied to Strasbourg. Um, Grenoble and Angers because all three of them were the ones that first of all take the B2 and uh, they let you start off with advanced Italian um, which for me is super important because that's a requirement for some master's degrees is that you have to start the language at an advanced level already. Now I have to ask, have you actually been to France before? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I was I was supposed to go to France during COVID, like I had, you know, tickets to stuff and everything, but obviously that, you know, did not happen <laughs> here in, in the US. It's like, you, you have to go to student debt, basically, if you don't have like a full ride scholarship. My, my reason to go to France was much more out of the blue. Like, I was just looking at memes on my phone, January 2020. <laughs> And I, I came across a meme in French and I was like, huh, I wonder what, what this thing says. And then I started learning French without any reason. And then like five months later, I saw that Campus France exists. I was already enrolled in a university here, but we have a lot of protests and protests are usually led by students, which means school stops a lot. And I was like one month into, into the school and we already had stopped for like four months. And I was like, yeah, this is not gonna work out, especially if this is... So then I decided that, that I was gonna try it, but I had only been learning French for like five months. So then I started learning French seriously. And the same year, uh, 2020, I took the, the Delft and that was the, 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 the main factor, the main decider, the main, the main thing that was gonna determine if I was gonna make it or not. I took it and I passed it, and that's pretty much why I apply at the end of the day. So is your family cool with you studying abroad? Yeah, yeah, for sure. They would definitely prefer that I go to Europe. You know, financially supporting a student in the US is like super hard on the wallet. <laughs> and you know, you're, you're getting basically the same quality of education. Depending on the institution, it can be a lot better than what I have, you know, here in rural Hawaii. <laughs> and you know, it's also a super good experience culturally. It's always good to see the world and stuff. If you can get your education in another country, that's great for you. In my case, it was much more difficult. My mom wasn't really into it at the beginning. 
she wasn't really on board. I really had to talk to her quite a few times until she finally saw that I was accepted. Then she kind of changed her mind and it's helping me out more now. It's a very long and difficult road to get to where we are on the topic now. Okay, so what comes next? Now that you've been admitted to university, what do you have to do now? I actually just got my visa last week. It was actually a day after I got back here, so it was super fast. Then what I needed to do was confirm my apartment because my apartment needed a bunch of documents from me basically saying that I have a guarantor, which is a super important thing if you're living in France is that most places require that you have a guarantor. So in my case, my guarantor was my mom. So I had to upload some documents about her financial situation, statement of guarantee from her, and then I had to upload my own stuff. So I got my apartment confirmed. And now what I need to do is enroll. Basically, you just get put in, in their system. They assign you a French student number. I, I still have to do that. That starts next week. The only things I really need to do are things after I get there. So, you know, like bank account, phone plan. In Colombia, we're still stuck in the uh, middle of COVID. So, because of the COVID and vaccine situations, the, the embassy is, is closed. So, we can't really do anything. I can't really do anything. I'm just waiting for it to open because I have essentially everything I need for the visa part, except for some photos, but that's not urgent. I'm still here waiting for the visa part to open and then I can actually continue. I imagine you guys are pretty excited. So what are your expectations? How do you see this playing out? I'm an over planner. So I've you know, been, been researching this for a while now. And what I'm expecting when I get there is, you know, a little bit of bureaucracy, just a little bit, especially because I've been through this whole process, you know, it's it's not going to stop. Good expectations. I hear good things about the Strasbourg area and uh, being welcoming, you know, to foreign students. And I know that there's a lot of services at the university that help with new students. Like I know there's a buddy system of some sort where they like, you know, put you with a French student and they show you around. Something that I'm looking forward to as well is the fact that things in Europe are so close together, you know, because I, I like to travel a lot. If anybody's interested in uh, checking out travel photos, because I know a lot of people watching this are probably into that, you know, I have an Instagram where I upload travel photos, Madame Mondiale, and you know, that's something that's kind of hard to do on an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's gonna be a good experience, I, I know that for sure. Bureaucracy, validating things, enrolling to the university, those are the main things. I'm also planning on getting a job because you can work 20 hours a week, getting to know my way around, meeting some people that I already know that live there from the internet. Very exciting times waiting for that to come. Are you nervous about anything at all? Is there anything you're kind of worried about? A little bit, you know, like I'm, I'm an 18 year old woman who's never lived away from my parents, right? So, you know, naturally that's like, that can be a little bit anxiety inducing, but you know, I'm, I'm doing my best to, you know, like prepare myself. Like I'm doing a lot of research what to look out for and I'm trying to sort of familiarize myself with the area a little bit before I even get there. You know, Strasbourg is a pretty safe place, but you know, this is sort of general advice and you know, my parents aren't going to be there to, you know, help me with stuff. I don't want to involve my parents more than they really need to be involved. You know, I, I have to try to become more independent. It's probably not going to be that bad. Me, I'm looking forward to living by myself that's kind of that's that's gonna be it's gonna be something new living by myself in a different country that is even newer essentially things like food and knowing when to clean you're always cleaning stuff being able to keep myself on track knowing that i have no guidance also i'm afraid of not being able to follow the curses, the classes in French. Yeah, I think about <laughs> that sometimes too. It's like, these are university classes 
or people who have been speaking French their entire life. Yeah, this is not Duolingo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, those are the main things. Living by myself and following French at a native speed. Those are the main nerve-wracking things that I think about often. Well, look, I'm sure you both are going to be totally fine. And thank you for talking to me. I hope to hear from you guys again. Well, yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us uh, on here. It's been a pleasure talking about this. Hope we maybe help somebody a little bit. Yeah, maybe give our, our insight into the process and things that you may look for. Thanks again, guys. Something you should look forward to is seeing the follow-up interview that we do with Isabella and Adrian after they've been in France for a few months. We all have expectations of what it's going to be like, but how do those hold up when you compare them with reality? So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss that interview and all the other content that we got coming out for you. I'll see you next week.